Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Word for Life. Today, we're going to talk about the harder conversations. Maybe it's time you need to have one. So we've all been in situations where people assume they know how we feel or we assume how other people feel. We go through the motions and we continue to work with those individuals, not really understanding that our assumptions may be incorrect or maybe correct, but maybe a little skewed. So it's important to make sure that we don't use assumptions when we go into conversations. But if we have used assumptions and it has started to boil up and grow over time, it might be time to go and have a difficult or hard conversation with the individual that you have some consternation or some disagreements with. I have a personal story around this. When I was in my early college days, I had a friend who was often wanting to use my car, or use, wanting to use me for getting to places and doing things. And I often would do this thinking that that's what friends do. Friends help each other out. But as we started to get into more and more of this, taking him to Walmart, taking him to other places, taking him out, so on and so forth, it started to feel like they were taking advantage of me. Now, at the beginning, in, in my naivety of my younger age, I assumed that, no, they were using me as a friend, and that's what friends do, and I didn't think much of it. But eventually, it came to the point where I felt like that's all that was being done. So I needed to go and have that hard conversation with my friend to tell them that, look, I understand you don't have your own car and you like to use my car and that we're friends and that's generally friends help each other out, but it's starting to feel very one-sided. And I don't like the way this friendship is going if it does continue down this way. Now, obviously having it as a friend, that was a challenging conversation for me to have because I didn't want to ruin the friendship. But at the same time, I felt like the friendship was not being advantageous to both of us. It seemed to only be serving the friend. Now, what was interesting is after I had the conversation, the friend said, wow, I didn't even realize that I was doing this. I just, I thought this was how you were comfortable doing this. I didn't realize it was becoming a problem. I'll go ahead and start asking other people and we'll balance things out. And it worked out for a little while, but it did come to kind of light to myself that they were actually, in fact, only using me for my car. The point being of this is that I went and had the harder conversation with them. And in the long run, it turned out better for myself. And it caused me less stress because I'd already had that conversation. It was no longer my assumptions. Nothing was out there that I was worrying about or constantly contemplating about how our friendship was going. It was more about the the conversation itself and the assumptions that I had made. So that was my story. Another story I have is about a person that I knew who was spending all of his time working. And it was starting to cause strain on his fam family relationships with his wife and his uh, daughter, actually. And through this process, the the wife actually needed to go and have that hard conversation with her husband saying, I understand that you want to provide for our family and you're doing everything, but your daughter is feeling like there is a lack of engagement with you or you're just not around that much. And I'm starting to feel the same way. The husband or this person I knew didn't realize they were doing this. They thought I'm putting in the work effort. I'm getting in the time to go and support my family and do what is needed but didn't realize by doing that, they're also taking away from the time that is quality time and valuable time for their family, for his family, and therefore not helping the overall big picture. So through this more difficult conversation, because the wife knew how important work was for her husband and how important it was for the husband to feel like they were supporting the family, they were able to make modifications to their living situation, such as the husband made sure that he only worked a certain amount of hours, or if he needed to work later, he separated the time to be able to actually come back and work later, but spend some good quality time with his wife and his daughter. So that harder conversation for the wife and for the husband as well, even though he didn't initiate it, became a more useful way of spending their time together. And it brought to light certain assumptions that have been made and certain concerns that were out there that weren't really being voiced. So this kind of gives some ideas about how harder conversations, although they might be hard at the time, can serve to benefit in the long run. So let's kind of go into harder conversations and where they come from. So 
typically the reason a hard conversation is needed is because there is a misunderstanding. Either someone said something that somebody didn't completely understand or didn't say something that needed to be said to really complete the full picture of what was going on or what was uh, being asked of. So misunderstandings can often lead to un unspoken ideas or unspoken situations that need further expansion. So whenever misunderstandings occur, hopefully they're not always hard conversations, but if things wait too long, they can build into harder conversations that you need to go and have that. So that way you can clear up misunderstandings. This leads kind of into the next one, a miscommunication. So some of this can be cultural. So interpret, interpreting what somebody said or the body language that somebody used or their tone of voice, that's the miscommunication that can occur. And whenever you have miscommunication, obviously that can lead to like misunderstanding. And if you let that go along long enough and you start working around these miscommunications or misunderstandings, they can cause resentment or frustration among the participants of that miscommunication to where they aren't really working towards the same purpose. So another reason to go and have that harder or difficult conversation, typically because we haven't taken the time to really ask the questions up front and clarify any misunderstandings or miscommunications. Another one is assumptions. And we all know what happens when we assume, right? So it's really important that we try and alleviate any kind of assumptions we have in conversations, interactions, or situations because generally our assumptions are wrong because we, well, I won't say they're wrong, but they can <clears throat> lead to challenges in the future because we're trying to piece together bits of information rather than asking for clarification. So assumptions, while they're good when you need to move fast and try and get things done quickly, if you're having a more important conversation, it's better to clear up assumptions or clarify assumptions with the person you're working with or the people you're working with. So that way everybody's on the same page going forward. And one of the other ones is cultural norms. So the norms that come from different cultures obviously are not always the same. There are some people that consider being on time as being 15 minutes early, where in other cultures being on time is being 15 minutes late. So those kind of assumptions need from different cultures also need to be addressed and also need to be understood and come to kind of a place of agreement. But these are some of the places that usually generate the need to have a harder conversation. So now that we've talked about a few of the ways that harder conversations do have the need to occur, let's talk about how do we start a hard conversation. So one thing to make important is to make sure you have a soft start. So don't tear into the person saying, you're not doing this right and this is wrong and so on and so forth. Really go, hey, I have a concern that I think that we aren't necessarily on the same page or I wanna to talk to you about something that's been bubbling inside me that I haven't really thought about how to articulate yet, but I wanna talk with you because I think it's important to our working relationship, personal relationship, whatever's the case. But it's that soft start and not really ripping into somebody that's important. Another thing is to make sure you have humility around your own part in the conversation. There's two sides to every coin. There's always usually assumptions on both sides, but make sure that you accept your part in the need for the harder conversation so that way it doesn't just seem like you're putting all the blame on the other person. Remember, when you put the blame on the other person, you lose your power to change the situation. So it's important to really not you know, make sure you clarify that you assume you miscommunicated, you misunderstood, or that you think our cult your cultures are different. Now, humility around culture, you grew up with a culture, so you don't necessarily need to apologize or anything for that, but just be humble that, hey, my culture might be different from your culture. Let's talk about it. This kind of leads into vulnerability, making sure that you're vulnerable with the person you're talking with, because when you're vulnerable, there's a good chance that they will be vulnerable as well. And you'll get a lot more out of the dialogue than trying to be um, protective or abrasive in the conversation. So that vulnerability and exposing yourself and admitting your humility, admitting the mistakes that you might have done and how it led to the situation really opens up, opens up the dialogue to be able to talk together. Another important part is complete listening. 
This is making sure that when the person is talking, you're not on your phone, you're not reading an email, you're not looking at IM, you are fully engaged in listening to what that person has to say. This is also not waiting for your turn to speak. Oftentimes while someone is speaking, we're formulating our own responses in our mind so that as soon as they're done, we can hop right in and start saying what we think. It's important. Don't go there yet. Allow some space after the person has finished talking to digest what they've said. Take in the full picture because if you start creating your own discussion or dialogue in the middle of it, there's a good chance that you will be missing part the important parts of what the person is saying. One way to really do this is to repeat what was said. So take what the person said and summarize it or shorten it or put it in your own words to make sure that what you heard or what you understood is what the person actually said. Also, if you're not sure about what they're saying, ask for clarifying questions. There's no harm in asking for, I'm not quite sure what you meant by this, and or really, did you mean this? So clarifying questions are important to ask to make sure that everybody's on the same page about what was said. And make sure that at the end of the hard or the difficult conversation that you have a plan on how to work together and how to really address what's going on this could be like how are you going to interact in the future knowing that you either have different personalities or different ways of communicating so that way when you have situations in the future that maybe could result in a need for a difficult conversation you can change that scenario and be ready for that by already understanding how to work together Another thing is making sure you both have complete agreement on what really led to the need for those harder for that harder conversation. By being on the same page and agreeing what was the situation that led to it, you can both be more aware of how to prevent that in the future and catch each other and help you know hold each other accountable in a good way for what is actually needed. Now, these are all great things, and we've kind of understood what is a hard conversation, where does it come from, how to go and start a hard conversation and how to kind of end one. But note, not all hard conversations are gonna go as you have planned. Some people are really unwilling to accept responsibility. They'll push it away. They'll say, you know what, it's not my fault. It's all you, they'll place blame. And it's not gonna go the way you had planned. Some people also don't want to change. And even though you've had the conversations, you see some ways you could work better in the future, they don't want to make the change. They find it too difficult. They find it's not important to them. And that's that's just sometimes the way it goes. So you need to recognize that you've done your part to try and make the situation better. You've gone, you know, not out of your way, but you've gone through the important parts to try and get the situation better, working in a more productive manner or having a more productive relationship, whether it be with you and your friends, you and a spouse, you and your family, whatever might be the case, but you've taken the steps to go and try and make the situation better and having that good, you know, heart to heart or harder or more difficult conversation. And another thing to recognize is that a person's willingness to change is their own. You can't force them to. So if they don't want to change, that's not on you. You can't do a lot about it. That's on them to make a change. So, so you might not always get the outcome you expect from these more difficult conversations, and some people just don't want to change. In the future, you might need to lower the amount of interaction you have with that person or making sure that any interactions you do have with them are possibly in a written form, thinking in a work situation, so that way you it's not unclear about what's going on and you have a good solid foundation for how you're going to do it. So you might have to do the work on your own side to prevent those harder conversations in the future. In the, in the personal realm, it might be something like, hey, um, you might need to start what you know, walking away from certain relationships or stepping back from, you know, certain family members if they are just not going to try and improve the situation between the two of you by coming to mutual understandings, reducing misunderstanding, communication, miscommunication, assumptions, and things like that. So you might have to start distancing yourself from those for the betterment of yourself. So today we talked over about the need for hard conversations and how they can possibly be done. Hopefully you don't need to have hard conversations because you've already done the work up front to make sure that you don't need to, but we all make assumptions, unfortunately, and sometimes it leads to the need to these hard conversations. So I hope this uh, episode today is giving you some good guidance on how to go understand them, recognize them, and what you can do to try and have those hard conversations. 
I hope you'll join me on the next episode of Words for Life. I really enjoyed this one. And if you ever want to have some one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching or conversations with me, don't hesitate to reach out to me at attitudealtitudeacceptance at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description. I want to thank you all for your time today and have a great rest of the day.